G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course Kalflos and today we're going to be taking a look at the Path of Champions here with Jinx. We're going to be doing the Chapter 2 of her campaign. It's going to bring us to Noxus here, my favorite region of course. And we're going to be taking on Darius in the, champ the Loose Cannon Part 2. So as usual, we're going to go ahead and take a look and see what relics I'm running on her before we do anything. So I am going with a Stalker's Blade as well as a Ginsu's Rage Blade today. So basically no changes from the first episode of course. Stalker's Blade will strike the strongest enemy upon summon. And Ginsu's Rage Blade will grant her a plus one plus one each attack. Which is definitely... I kind of cool and what else i think is cool is the fact that here in this campaign in you know her chapter two we're taking on darius here and this is a very nice parallel to of course you know vice chapter two where she took on the grand general jericho swain i think it's a very nice you know parallel again that's because you know vibing the elder sister and all takes on something of the elder statesman like figure of noxus in swain and jinx here takes on in some ways in some degree the second in command of noxus in the form of darius i'm really careful not to depict darius and swain as different rankings because to my understanding of the lore at least the empire of noxus is governed by the Triferics, and of course we all know the Triferics is actually three people combined which is of course swain darius and another nameless or faceless one so essentially they're all the same rank but i think you get what i'm trying to get at here uh, hopefully i got my message across but anyway let's go ahead and get this adventure replayed uh, before we do that let's read the rules first special adventure rules when the four units attack grant the strongest attacking unit plus two and plus zero all right Okay, we are all loaded in. So as you can see, our mini boss here is Zoe. And I'm seeing a pattern here because she is one of the most repeated, uh, you know, mini bosses. Of course, I believe in Lux and another champion. I can't remember whom. But yeah, I think I've seen her a couple of times throughout the entire Path of Champion series. Which is, uh, you know, kind of, well, in some ways, kind of odd i don't really know what's the correct term here but i think you get what i'm trying to say and of course our final boss is darius and he looks like he's down here uh, in the shadow of the immortal bastion kind of cool okay so let's head back and we're gonna head to the first node and pick up a power all right we get grit allies have attack grow my power to match my health counterfeit production round start create a fleeting zero cost counterfeit copies and then round start give your weakest ally plus three plus three just run with a fixer upper okay so i think this is definitely a good set here i am really inclined to get the counterfeit production because this could actually work really really well with jinx's power of course uh, essentially what's the worst that could happen too when you play a discard a card deal one to the enemy nexus and one to a random enemy so essentially each time we discard a zero cost counterfeit copies each round it's gonna deal one to the you know nexus it's basically guaranteed damage but i am also inclined to reroll this because of all the fleeting abilities that i am aware this game actually provides the counterfeit copies one doesn't really help us too much well it could be good because it could you know copy some extra cards but i don't really use it to be fair i would prefer something that would give a little bit extra damage so i think a fleeting blades edge would be much better so i think we're going to try to reroll for that and we do get the fleeting blades edge very nice bouncing blades round star great of fleeting blades edge in hand so i am going to pick this up Okay, so let's head to the first note, Noxquire Arena. So, this is what I get for stepping into a random portal without knowing where it leads. But where would my sense of adventure be otherwise? I guess I should figure out where I am. Looks bleak. Gee, Jinx, I think we're Noxus. This sure sounds like a Noxin Arena. You're right, Fishbones. What do they call the people here who like beating the snot out of each other again? Roadies? Rascals? Oh, right. Reckoners. Hey, who drew that? <laughs> okay, so Nox and Entertainment. Game start create a Nox Square Arena in the foe's hand. It costs one. Okay, not a bad start. Some Dredger, Ego, Apprentice, Pow Pow, and Jury Rig here. So I think we're just going to keep this. Right, let's bring on the eager apprentice first uh yeah let's bring on eager apprentice How can I, help? I was contemplating the boom rookie then i remembered we had the blades edge so it might be better to bring him on that way we get the extra spells all right so let's drop one of the jury rigs and we'll do a blades edge to the nexus Gonna go with a Boomker rookie here. I can do this. Let's attack with this. 
sure about that? All right, we'll deal one to the Nexus as well. And that's nine damage. Awesome. It doesn't matter because we win here. Okay, so we get not a good card, you know, not a good um, set of cards here because the Chief Mechanist Zevi is kind of expensive as well as the It That Stairs as well. Messenger Sigil, create five messengers in your deck doesn't really work too well. Uh, when you draw a card, give it fleeting and create an exact copy of it in hand. I don't think this is that great, but we might just pick it up because it's a much better option than the rest of the other cards here. So yeah, I think we'll just take this. Okay, let's head down to the Support Champion. And we get Caitlyn, Ari, and Trindamir. Okay, I think I want to reroll this because I would ideally like something a little bit better. That way we could have something that plays off Jinx's discard ability. Uh, Trindamir is of course kind of expensive and the fact that he has a Titan's X doesn't really help much. If this was a reduced cost each round, that could have been great, but unfortunately not. So yeah, we're gonna reroll this. We get Swain, Udir, and Alawi. Okay. I think we'll pick up Swain. He looks fine. Regeneration, uh, kind of good on him because he has 6 health. And the, what is it? The Imperial Demolitionist could be good because we have a lot of uh, beefy units that are like 4-3 or 3-2. So I think we could use that and to our advantage. And let's see who do we take on here. We have two healing units, which is really, really weird. And this is a Solitary Monk. So none of these are that great because this will be a cut, uh, you know, cut some cards. And I believe these two are just heals. Um, I think we're going to head down the middle road, though. That way, we don't lock ourselves into, you know, one of the other options here. So, that means we can either take on the Trifan Shoebreaker or the Stargazer. Let's read what they do first. Stars give round start with a fleeting Springs gift in the foe's hand. Uh, Trifan Shoebreaker, victory to cruelty. The foe's 5 plus power units have fearsome. Okay, so I think we'll take on the Stargazer and then we'll head down the middle. That way, we can unlock these two nodes as well. Okay, a decent start, so I think we'll keep this. I must find my way back home to tend to the flocks. Ah, uh, I'm sure they'll be fine without you for a bit. You know, kids, they entertain themselves. Okay, nice. So I think what we'll do here is we'll bring on the Bunker Rookie. Uh, no, actually, no. Let's not do that. Let's actually bring on Zona Urchin instead because we will get a little bit more damage that way. Osu can sniff out any star anywhere. I'm inclined to discard the Blade's Edge, but I don't think that's a wise decision. So I think we'll just attack with this. Please don't hurt them. All right, so we'll do this, and it should take it out. Yes. It's a good thing I didn't discard there. <laughs> Alright, I think we'll discard... No, we'll not discard anything first. Let's do a... No, actually, no. Let's pass the turn. Let's see if it attacks. And that way, we could maybe sack off the Scrap Scuttler with the, uh, you know, Blade's Edge. And it should kill the Mountain Goat. Yeah, okay. That was definitely the right call. All right. So, we do this. And it should kill the Mountain Goat. There we go. get a little more damage this way because we bring on Imperial Demolitionist. We deal one to the Urchin. For the Empire. Not bad, not bad. I'll bring on the two Zona Urchins here. I'm sorry, the Bunker Rookie. Your first big mission. Mystical levitation requires concentration. 
And we can even do this. We can discard the Blade's Edge. I think it should be fine because we should have more than enough damage. And there we go. Okay, so I think we're just gonna pick up these flame jumpers straight up. When I'm discarded, summon me. When I'm summoned, give me barriers. Sounds good. The prefect could be good, but we don't really are, you know, we're not really playing too many fast spells, slow spells, or skill spells. Well, then again, we are playing a lot of the Blades Edges and the Boom to Rookies. But I think in the long run, the flame jumpers might be better because it's a discard. It's still gonna deal one damage. So overall, it might be a much better option here. Deal tree to anything or destroy a landmark could be good with the plunder as well. But I think I'm still gonna favor the flame jumpers. That way, we, you know, we have incentive to discard stuff. Okay, so we can either go to the Messenger or the Legion Marauder here. But I am going to head down the middle. That way, it opens up the, you know, it remains uh, open for us to go either way. So, yeah, we're going to head to the middle. Uh, we're going to leave because we don't need the health. And let's see what we get here. We get, oh, not nice. Champion item chest, not great. And a shop as well. So, it's not that great of a fork. Uh, I think we're just going to still head up because I would prefer to go for either one of these two than the item chest. But we're going to have to decide if we go to the champion item or the shop later on. So, let's take on the messenger here. Space Doggo's round start. Shuffle the messenger into the foe's deck. If the foe has three plus messengers, create a fleeting starbone in the foe's hand. Okay, I think we'll reroll Swain and Jinx here because they are kind of expensive. Mm, no, we'll keep Jinx. We will reroll Swain. We'll keep the rest of this. I think it should be okay. Woof. Nice doggy. Good doggy. <laughs> Today I learned Jinx is afraid of dogs, <laughs> so that's something to note. Okay, so let's bring on Eager Apprentice here. How can I let's play a Jury Rig. Remaining mana, Blades Edge to the Nexus. Okay, I think we'll drop Boomker Rookie. I can do this. Might even get the win here, to be fair, do we? Uh, I don't think that's enough damage, but we'll see. Maybe in the next turn, or, you know, the turn after that. Find me. Yeah, in two turns, we'll get the win. Or actually, no, we'll get the win next. We'll get the win this turn, I should say. Because if we bring on Imperial Demolitionist, we deal one to this guy. Her skill will deal two, and that would be essentially three damage in total. Nice. For the Empire. Okay, so let's see what we get here. We get Raven Bloom Conservatory, Back Alley Barkeep, and a Shady Character. Back Alley Barkeep is Ephemeral, so I don't think I want that. Uh, Raven Bloom Conservatory, when I summon someone a copy of me, count down 10, create a Tibalk in hand. Could be good, because I believe it's going to give a plus one, plus one, right? The Tibalk, just to double check. 
Um, plus one, plus zero for the rest of the game. All your spells and skills do one extra damage. Okay, that's definitely kind of nice. Shady character could be good as well. Pick a follow transform me to an exact copy of it. I think we're just going to pick this up. This looks like a much better option, at least in my opinion. And let's see what do we go for here. We either go for the champion item chest or a shop. I am still kind of undecided, but I think we're going to have to make a very quick decision because I really don't want to take up too much of your time. I want to beat Zoe in this episode as well. So I think we're just going to head down to the shop. I think I value a power a little bit more than a champion item. All right, hopefully you get something good and my gamble pays off. We get overwhelmed, which is kind of decent, so I am going to pick it up. And I don't think we're going to get any cards because they're all kind of, you know, costly in terms of 7, 7, um, and 5 mana over here. And the rest of these aren't that great. So yeah, I think we're just going to leave this. We don't need the health, so let's leave as well. And we're just going to straight up take on Zoe. So, you're the one who's been opening all these portals. Neat trick, but also, why? Oh yeah, that's me. Isn't it great? It is a little great. Wait, no, hold up. Didn't your mom ever teach you you can't just tear a hole through the fabric of time and space? Hmm, nope. Anyway, here's an extra special portal, just for you. <laughs> well, I hope it's fun. Uh, anyway, the girl goes tumbl tumbling past you mid-air, somehow both elegant and totally graceless at the same time. Idly, you wonder what makes her float. Sparky, kiddo, round star, create a random tree or less cost less to card in the foe's hand. Give it fleeting and reduce its cost to one. Alright, I think we're gonna have to reroll this because this isn't the greatest start. In fact, it might be a terrible start to be fair because uh, Ravenous Flock only deals to damage and stun. Shady character, this is kinda expensive. Amateur Aeronaut could be good, so I think we'll keep that. Uh, Pow Pow could be an emergency option we play, so yeah, I think we'll keep that as well. Ever think to yourself, gee, I wonder what else is going on in the vast infinity that is time and space right now. Only always, if I could go wherever I wanted, whenever I wanted. Mm-hmm. Now you're thinking with portals. <laughs> I'm pretty sure everyone wants to go where they want, whenever they want. So that's, yeah, that's definitely something to consider. Alright, so let's bring on Jury Rig here. Deal one damage to the uh, goat, and then we can deal the extra one with the Blade's Edge. go all right take the one damage here sorry not one damage but we'll trade with the uh, serpent I should say all right let's bring on rocket border Okay, let's attack with this first. Alright, cool. Blade's Edge will take out this Zoe. It's alright. Bring on Jinx here to take it out. Rules are made for for people. Bring on Swain if we want to. It should be big damage. Empire above all. You know, this has just dawned upon me, you know. I mean, we have Swain in the deck here, and imagine Darius's face when he sees Swain teaming up with Jinx here to take him down. I think that would be hilarious if we could, you know, picture that in person. But, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and attack with this. Of 
seeking the highest cave. All right, we should win here. So if we just drop a jury rig, and we do a blade's edge, we should win. Alright, cool. So looks like we get a battle reward here for the champions. I think we'll reroll this because this might not be too great. Game start drawing me if I'm not in your hand. When I'm someone give me barrier and I summon heal your nexus equal to my cost. I would like to prefer if we could get some damage damaging stuff here. I think that'll be much better. We get okay, star of free attack is actually kinda good. So I think we're gonna give this to Jinx because she is much cheaper than Swain, of course. And that is about it. So that is Zoe complete. So that means we can move on into the second power node and then take on Darius. And we're going to do that in the next episode because we are running out of time right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode of the Path of Champions with Jinx. And if you did, consider leaving a like as well as subscribing to the channel. Really do appreciate your support here. But most importantly, it's so that you don't miss future episodes or uploads of single player playthroughs or content just like this one. And with that being said, this is Kefalo signing off. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for joining me as well. Hopefully I catch you all in the next one. Goodbye.